Well, time now for part three in our Vows to Keep series on marriage and the Ten Commandments. David and Tracy Sellers dive into commandments six and seven. Thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not commit adultery. Two obvious necessities in regards to a healthy marriage. But the Sellers say there's even more to comprehend than just what's obvious. Ten Commandments really can make a difference in our marriage. They sure can. They sure can. And, and I actually want to start today by reading out of Luke chapter 11. This is verse 28. Jesus says, But even more blessed are all those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. And I think as we read the Ten Commandments and we realize how practical they are, this is a, this is a meaningful verse. It's important sometimes to look at your life and ask the question, am I seeing some gaping holes? Is there places that I'm missing some of that blessing that I think God would have for me? God's word tells us that we will be blessed when, he, when we do what he asks of us. And we're faithful to that. And Jesus makes it very clear that he will love us no matter what, but by obeying these commandments, we're going to see some great fruit. I think it's interesting as we look at the Ten Commandments how simple and how applicable they are. It, going back to the, to the greatest commandment, I'm going to read out of Mark 12. Um, Jesus highlights the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord our God with all your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all of your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. I love that. I'm so thankful that Jesus boils down what he wants for us right here in these sentences. It's really short and sweet. It's not complicated. We don't need to make it complicated. He's saying, love me as the only God. Make me number one. Love me with all you have and then reach out and love to others the same way that you would want to be loved. The Ten Commandments, some people would say, are outdated because they're in the Old Testament. But I'd like to argue with that because mm -hmm. Jesus actually specifically talks about nine of them in the New Testament. He makes it clear that these are still important. They're still relevant today. Well, last week on Faith and Friends, we did discuss the first five commandments. And if you have missed that uh, episode, you can certainly go to faithandfriends.wtlw. Start again, faithandfriends.wtlw.com. And you can see last week's episode with the first five commandments. But now we're going to jump into number six. And goodness gracious, when we're talking about marriage, thou shalt not murder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot of times we, we would just want to laugh that one off, right? That doesn't seem like that is... Lord help us if that applies. But you know what? There's probably times when it does apply. When we get married, we start out by saying, oh, I love this person. This is just not one of those thoughts that goes through our head. But we've all had those moments where we're literally screaming our heads off at our spouse. And we're effectively killing our marriage mm -hmm. with those words. It's, it's murderous to our relationship, some of the things that we can say. James chapter 4 talks about this. It says, you want what you don't have, so you scheme and you kill to get it. You're jealous, you can't get it, so you fight and you wage war to take it away from them. But you don't have what you want because you don't ask God, and then when we ask, we ask with the wrong motives because we just want it for our own selfish pleasure. It says it right there, we don't get what we want, so we're willing to kill our marriage in this situation. There's the murder right To get there. it. Yeah, it's exactly. not the murder that we instantly think mm -hmm. about. There are other ways that we can break this commandment in our marriage. Definitely. Yeah. I, I mean, effectively, if we were to think about this in terms of our marriage, the death of a marriage is effectively a divorce. And in divorce, the process of this death is something that's not quick. It's mm -hmm. usually very painful, very slow. And... The good part about that is that a lot of times you can recover from that. But most marriages, they're killed over the course of many, many years mm -hmm. and, and lots and lots of pain, lots of agony. So even if it's been something that you see, it's, it's years in the coming, there's almost always this point in time in which there's a spouse that gives that final cut, that final thing that just seems to kill it. And you can do that through your actions and through the thoughts that you have. You can kill the friendship in your marriage. You can kill the, the passion. You can kill the love. You can kill all these different aspects of your marriage. But Jesus came to give us life and to give us love. And to do those things, to apply those things into our marriages, we find that with the greatest commandment, he says, love the Lord and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, this is like the closest neighbor we've got, right? Yeah. <laughs> so 
you can be confident that if you're going to apply what you've read here, you will not be someone who's going to murder your marriage. Wow. Yeah. One way that that can happen is through adultery. And it can be physical, emotional, in your mind. And that's actually the seventh commandment. You shall not commit adultery. So we have to look at what that word actually means. Well, adultery is anytime we seek union with someone outside of our covenant relationship. Yeah, there's a lot of times where, you know, you might be a guy who's looking at pornography and you, you think to yourself, you know, well, this isn't as serious as actually having an affair. Well, I, I would argue that in Matthew 5, Jesus says basically, you, shan't, you should not commit adultery, but I say that whoever looks on a woman to, with lust has already committed adultery with her. So you're trying to unify yourself with someone who's in a picture. Mm. And for some reason, for a lot of guys, that seems like it's less dangerous. But it is, it is not less dangerous. It's basically like, like seeking out prostitution but without having the money invested in it, right? You've committed the sin, the damage is done. And this is why this command is here. And for women, it can be emotional affairs. It might not be pornography for them, but they're still trying to unite themselves with someone outside of their marriage. They're giving part of themselves to another that's not their spouse. And I think this commandment is very similar to the first commandment that we talked about last time, which is to have no other gods before you. And in a marriage relationship, that's a singular relationship. We should have no mm -hmm. other relationship outside of that that's as equal in importance. And I think in this situation, to have adultery not creep into your marriage slowly, put in some ground rules in a place, put in some boundaries, and talk about, hey, let's share the same passwords. I want you to have access to my phone. I want this to be out in the open. And really, this commandment is for the protection of our marriage. This is God's loving us, saying, adhere to this commandment, and it's going to be a safety net for your marriage.